What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekaWatt video and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a $1000 gaming PC build with all the parts behind me. As well as showing you how to do it step by step, I'm going to run through all the parts before booting it up and testing it with a load of the most popular games. Without any further ado though, let's jump into it. I'm going to kick things off as always by installing our CPU, motherboard and our RAM. But first, I want to give a massive shout out to today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Immerse yourself in an epic fantasy world in one of the most popular free to play games. Collect, equip, train and upgrade your epic heroes. You can open these really cool blue shards to make your quest through Teleria even better. I got this one called Vrask who just looks like an absolute boss, as well as this Sentinel who can actually sort of heal himself, and finally Mystic Hand who will heal one of your own. Compete against other players in tournaments fighting the Spider's Den, Ice Golem's Peak, the Almighty Fire King, or the Notorious Dragon. Go to the special links in the description, and if you're a new player, you'll get 10 mystery shards, two clan boss keys, 100,000 silver, and a free champion executioner. I mean, how sick does that look? This free package will only be available for the next 30 days, and you can find your extra rewards in the app here. Back to the build though today, and we're going to take our motherboard out of our box first off. This is the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. Now, while AMD are releasing B550, they have confirmed this board will support any of the next generation CPUs. For this build though, I'm using the AMD Ryzen 5 3600. With 6 cores and 12 threads boosting up to 4.2 GHz, it's got a bit of an edge over the Ryzen 3 3300X, especially if you want to overclock it. To install it, we're going to pull our arm up on our CPU socket, find the golden triangle on our processor, and line this one up with the one on our motherboard. It will simply fall into place and you pop the arm down. It requires no pressure, no force, and can be done with a little finger. Next up, we're gonna install our RAM. This is Corsair's Vengeance RGB Pro. It's got a bit of RGB up top, a fast 3000 megahertz clock speed, and is gonna look great in today's build. To install your RAM or your memory, pull back the clips on the second and fourth RAM DIM slots. Then find the notch just off center on your DIM and line this up with the notch on the socket on your motherboard. Apply even pressure to both sides in it. It clicks in super duper easily. Finally, we're going to grab this really great AMD stock cooler from our CPU box. And if you haven't used this before, it will have pre-applied thermal paste. Mine has been used before, so a little drop isn't going to hurt. Before lining the holes on our cooler up and screwing it in corner by corner. Try and do this kind of diagonally to stop putting excess pressure on our CPU. Then we're going to plug up the fan cable to the header on the motherboard and we're done. We're next going to go ahead and install our motherboard over into our case. And this is the Corsair 275R Airflow. It's got great airflow as the name suggests and is a really reasonably priced great looking chassis. You want to take off each of the side panels of the case because that's going to make it a lot lot easier to work with. We then need to take our IO shield and with the audio ports at the bottom and the silver side facing inwards in the case we need to clip this in to the back of the case just like so. We're then going to pop the case back round and next check that we've got a black case standoff underneath each of the holes on our motherboard. We're gonna take our motherboard and slide it through the rear IO shield we put in a moment ago. The center standoff is slightly raised which will hold the motherboard into place. You then wanna take these screws which Corsair kindly include in this little brown box in order to screw our motherboard down and secure it into place. With the motherboard in place, I'm gonna install our M.2 storage. And for this, we're gonna need a tiny little screwdriver. <laughs> you wanna find the M.2 slot on your motherboard and remove this equally tiny little screw, which is gonna hold our M.2 drive in place. Talking to the M.2 drive, this is the XPG S40G. It's actually an RGB drive that not only looks good, but has NVMe storage on. We're gonna slide it into our M.2 slot and take the tiny little screw to secure it back down into place. 
Next up then we've got our power supply and this is from Corsair and it's their CX750M. I've used this unit loads and loads of times. Because it's semi-modular, we've already got our motherboard and our CPU power cable pre-installed for us, which means we just need to pop in one SATA power harness and one PCIe power cable. We're simply gonna slide the power supply in fan facing downwards. That's gonna pull in fresh air from under the case and secure it into the back of the chassis using the same screws we used to install our motherboard. We're now gonna plug up some of our cables while everything's nice and easy to access. First is our 20 plus four pin motherboard power cable. That's gonna thread through this grommet and clips into the big connector on the right hand side of our motherboard. We're gonna do the same thing at the top left of our chassis with our CPU motherboard power cable and then finally begin doing our front panel cables. These power all the ports and the buttons at the top of our case. First up is our USB 3 connector. It's keyed which means it will only clip in one way. Next up is our HD audio connector for that high definition audio and that goes to the bottom left of our motherboard. It's got a pin missing so we'll only go in one way. And then lastly we've got our little front panel connectors. I'll pop a diagram on your screen now to make this easier to follow along with. We're now left to install the last of our main components which is our graphics card and this is the MSI RTX 2060 Super. This is going to work great in this build. It's one of the best value 2060 Super cards and fits with the color scheme. Importantly, this GPU is the perfect 1440p or high frame rate 1080p gaming card, as we'll see in the benchmarks a bit later. We're now gonna take the card and shadow it over the silver kind of PCIe slot. That's gonna show us which of these back covers need removing. In our case, and it's, it's, it's normally the case, we want two and three. Hold on to these screws, which are the same as the motherboard and power supply ones. Then push back the retention clip on the right hand end of our PCIe slot and line up this gold connector with the slot itself. You can then push the card in and use the same screws from a second ago to secure it into place. Finally, on the power front, we're gonna run a singular six plus two pin GPU power cable, and that plugs into our graphics card like so. Now, before we jump into the benchmarks, I've got a final little trick up my sleeve. I'm gonna pop in some RGB fans at the top and the back here. These are optional. I'll link them in the description below. You don't need them if you wanna save a bit of money, but they're gonna look sick. For anybody wondering, I've just popped all the RGB kind of fan cables to the back of the case, which plug up just like so to the included controller. This is then powered by a simple SATA power cable that we ran a moment ago. The final step is to then run our fan cables to the four pin system fan headers on our motherboard. And I think we're pretty much done. All that remains is to pop our side panel back on and boot this machine up so we can see how it looks, but more importantly, how exactly it performs. Roll the montage. Okay then, now that we've put this thing together and seen just how good it looks when it's all powered up, let's take a dive and see exactly how it performs. I'm going to be running 8 or so games so we can get a really, really good idea. Apex Legends is first up at 1440p high settings. Uh, with these settings, you're looking at around about 130 frames per second, which is pretty fantastic really. GTA 5 is next up, and as with all the games, I've run it at 1440p, in this case, very high settings. 60 to 90 FPS, depending on the scene, is where you're going to sit. With GTA 5, you can turn down some of the kind of scaling options and the anti-aliasing and stuff like that, and get some really great playable frame rates at not only 1440p, but also 4K. Overwatch, a personal favourite of mine at the minute, 1440p ultra settings in the region of 130 frames per second. The game looks great and you could probably get 200 plus FPS at 1080p medium and likewise get well above 60 at 4K. Forza Horizon 4 is without a doubt my favourite game of the last couple of years though. At 1440p ultra settings pretty much maxed out but of course vSync disabled to allow us to get those super high frame rates, you look in 95 FPS. The game looks fantastic, runs super smooth, and actually isn't too hard to run anyway. Fortnite is next up. Some people love it, some people hate it, but if there's one thing that's for certain, when I don't include it, people go mental. So Fortnite, 1440p, epic. Uh, you're looking well over at 60 frames per second, sometimes over 80 or 90, giving you a really, really enjoyable game and experience. 
Project Cars 2 is probably the easiest of the games to run today, 1440p Ultra, uh, between 140 150 frames per second, which is pretty impressive if I do say so myself. The penultimate game today is a ray tracing title, Battlefield 5, 1440p, you're looking around 74 frames per second. The game looks great and is a game that's really well suited to ray tracing being turned on, even if it does make it, you know, significantly more power intensive to actually run. Finally, the last game on my list is kind of another ray tracing title, Call of Duty's Warzone, but the Battle Royale mode doesn't really support ray tracing. So here with RTX off in the settings, you're looking 1440p around 125 frames per second. But I think that pretty much wraps it up for all of the gaming benchmarks in today's video. If you've got any questions, want to learn more, got any comments, let me know down below. And remember, all the parts for the latest pricing will be linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next Geekawatt video.